Oh, you need to close those two before you get any pings. Alright, make sure that's working. Hey everyone, welcome back to more Rogue Legacy 2 speedruns. So last time we finally took me long enough, since the, since the addition of IRAD, I finally got a victory that took place on a single life. With that out of the way, I am going to be just moving on to basically killing my character to get a better one each time. And let's just begin. 3, 2, 1, go. But yeah, since I got that full clear with the first life, it's time I just start being more efficient, and I start doing the retire hero instantly to get the better traits. Oof. So apparently the fastest route is literally to die, get a good hero, and if it's a very good hero, you one life run it with that hero. That's what the two, the two previous world records did. Just got a really good hero. So we have magma mass. We have nothing else, unfortunately. So this is kind of just a basic character with a different spell. Oh well. So one of the cool things is that even if you get a hero that doesn't have like much power, you like really the fun of this is that you have a character that's very distinct than what you're used to. Oop. I thought I was going to land on the spikes. Gun. Unfortunately, I do not have a playstyle that supports gun very well. How's it going, Destiny Bound 2? Glad to have you here. So yeah. Gun. Maybe if I had a different equip... Um, a different control scheme, um, going gun would have been a good idea. But I don't, so... I have my control scheme, which makes the... Yeah, pretty bad idea. Alright, anti -therica. That's a nice one. Yep, didn't think I could, but I thought I'd check. How's it going? Yeah, Destiny Bound's here. Um, Krakatzal's here. Awesome to have both of you here, guys. Thank you so much for coming by. But yeah, how's it going? I'm doing well. So I just decided, um, since I did that, um, one life run, or, yeah, the run where I only died a single time, and, or, you know, I didn't die at all. My apologies. I'm going to be, from here on, basically doing runs where I immediately retire my hero, see how they fare. This one doesn't have anything special with it, just Magma Math instead of the regular spell, but... Hey, runs are runs, and we have Antitherica, so that's going to be great. Oop. Don't get hit, because I have Antitherica. Ah, just a chest. Oh well. Get some good equipment. Hey, and good equipment. And killing that guy actually increases my anti therica so it's actually worth it. Never mind. H2 spike. Or. It wasn't the spike, that was the. TGAT meeting. I unfortunately cannot, like, right now my mind is so focused on the game, I cannot parse out what that could be an abbreviation for. I'm sure the moment I think out, gr the Great Ace Attorney. Awesome. Oh, you're just playing that while waiting for me. Okay. Oof. Taking way too much damage. So I need to find the heirloom soon. Alright, Antithergus charged up. And I lost it. <laughs> Is this 
the only path? Alright, th there were some paths up and to the right there. Can't be too far, can it? Alright, well, we found the map. Right, the thing is, I need to, like, focus, and I keep getting all the questions, so I can't... Like, I have to just... Alright, there we are. Here I go. Alright. So, doing great. Alright, lots of Pantheon 5 run in Hollow Knight to a failed champion mistimed dash on low health. Oof. And Kraken Style, you're taking a bit of a D&D &D break of the week, so I'm just wanting a more chill time. Alright, fair enough. Yep. Get your chill time. Everyone needs a moment to chill. Therica, yep. Very close to getting all my town notes done. Nice. But that can wait as my session won't be for a while. Yep. I'm just going to, like, I think what I need to do and this is something I need to just like take care of because I always struggle with names. I need and I want the names to actually like by their name I want you to be able to tell what part of the world they're in. So I think I'm going to do what you suggested before. Finally get to it. And make a huge list of names to draw from. Alright. So we have the mech. We have everything except the exit to the right. So, yeah, I. The thing is, I just usually don't take notes at all. So, I've just been, like, sticking with that habit and it's just. Turning out that when you're playing a game with people online where you have this. You know. You have a screen in front of you, suddenly. Um, it stops feeling as secure of a strategy, you know? Because usually, like, it's not a concern, but that's because I'm just playing with friends in a nice little, you know, in a room. Now I'm playing it online, everyone can see, and the little consequences are becoming visible. Just in time. Alright, we're just getting out because I was in a bad position. There we go! My run enders in Pantheon 5 so far are Markov, Radiance, Obble Obbles, and now Failed Champion. Definitely, I've definitely had issue with a Markov um, in my Pantheon 5. Um, and then Radiance, of course, Radiance is a run killer. That's their job. <laughs> uh. It's always good to write NPC intentions and goals. Agreed 100%. I just, I already have those intentions and goals basically ready. I just don't have their names. And a lot of people always like asking their names or what their occupation is, where I'm just thinking about what kind of person they are, and then afterwards trying, and then like in the moment trying to figure out what occupation fits that kind of personality. Ooh, that was a little too close. Alright, I need to go down here. Alright, here we go. Mist doesn't matter. Just keep moving. Oh, I can dash in the air. Duh, I have that now. I'm just like, I came from the entrance. I do not have an air dash. Uh. Antitherica is good for damage, but not as good as, as I'd hoped to be. Alright.
Recently, I have been improving stats for NPCs. Just a sec. Okay. Alright. I have not prepared to make stat blocks for, and running down in my session notes. Yep. Um, so, one of the things is Roll20, the system I use. I am able to actually put monster stat blocks in there, but I actually have to physically put them in there. I can't just, like... Um, the info table will give me the monster stat block, but will not allow me to, like, hold onto it and load it easily. So I have to actually physically put them in there. But I've just been, like, doing that every once in a while. Like, thinking, hey, I might want to use this en enemy. Alright, let's drop it in. Also helps doing it early because, um, well, it, so one of the things is because I have, like, I'm altering the system quite a bit, um, there's some certain changes I need to make to monsters to make it work, to, like, make it not just a monster jury rigged into the system, but actually a part of the system, and so I like to try to think of how I can have this thing dynamic, have a dynamic with the readying face and stuff like that. So, like for example, there's a lot of abilities that happen like at the end of the turn or at the start of the turn, and my idea is a lot of those can happen during the readying phase or the closing phase. Oh my gosh. Gosh, those new projectiles make these guys so terrifying. Yeah, Blobfish are actually threatening now. Good job, developers. You made Blobfish threatening. Not just in the if you get hit sense, like, you know, it's in front of you, be cautious. And yeah, another thing is, like, because I have so many notes, I've been having trouble organizing them, so every once in a while I'll just, like, run to an area where I put one note here, and, like, I think of a note, and there could be, like, three different places in my notes it could be, so I need to balance that out a bit more. Figure out where things are going with a more consistent basis, but I'm not used to taking notes, is my big thing there. I used to weaning it, and just realized I need to, you know, be more detailed about it. Oh, well. Not gonna kill myself over a chest. Who knows? If this is one life run, that chest would have been a waste of my time. Oh no. I hate that. So it's always an inch too high, so you have to actually come over here and dash. So, now that I took that hit, my anti is dead. So yeah, in case you're wondering, anti therica is, as long as I don't get hit, I get a boost to my intelligence that lasts, um, yeah, as long as I don't get hit, whenever I kill an enemy, I get a boost to my intelligence. I guess as long as I don't take damage, because I guess get hit is a different phrasing. You know what? We're climbing up here. Let's actually check it out. See if there's anything of value. Nope. Yeah, I think Antitherica will actually increase the amount of health I gain from meat as well. Just to give you an example of why, it's, why I like it so much. Scholar Cape! Hey! Scholar Cape is, a is one of the greatest pickups. We are one charge down on Antitherica, so it's only 40% instead of 50%. Who cares? It's 40%. Go.
Uh, I tried to shield bash that, but I missed the timing slightly. Well. Now all my spells deal less damage. Unfortunate. There we go. I once had a chance to dry Dungeons and Dragons, but due to lockdown, it got cancelled, and it was a one-time opportunity, which would have been my first time getting involved with it, too. Sorry to hear that, Destiny Bound. Sorry to hear that. Yep. Dungeons and Dragons is a great game. And I will say, it is always better if you can get with, like, friends first, but, like, still. Great game. Great game. Uh. We've been migrating them all over to one doctor from Towns. Make sure to have that document with, um, make sure you have a little outline or somewhere where you can fast travel between positions, because that was, like, I remember when I was first making my notes for this Riftwind stuff, I have, like, a 100-page document of all of my notes I want for Riftwind, and it's just hard to parse through, to put simply. these rooms. Managed. Far shores. Are we good? Alright. Well, here we are. Antitherica. We need to find one lily and we need to find them all. And we should be charging up our Antitherica with this area. Ooh. I feel like Antitherica, because of its resolve cost and the fact that you have to actually kill enemies before it starts triggering, um, that it should have a higher max charge. Also because, yeah, you lose all charges when it breaks, not one. Like, I think of it... Oh my gosh. That was sad. Just did a dashing maneuver foolishly and lost my charges. So now I have one charge coming out instead of five. Oh well. Oh well. The person who got me into D&D just said, hey, want to join my campaign? They've been a long standing viewer in my stream, so I had no reason to say no. Also, I want to get into D&D. Nice, nice. By the way, how's it going, Jolota guy? Glad to have you here. Um, we're just doing a speed run. We actively killed our first character, so we could hopefully get a stronger one. This one just had a different spell, unfortunately. But, hey, that's still kind of an improvement. If nothing else, it makes for an entertaining run. Whew. All right, found another Lily. Now we have to find the most likely areas for Namon to show up. Probably all up. You know what? Let's try it. Let's try it. I'm sure. I think I remember this actually. Yeah, I remember this now. This was a mistake. Last time I did this to try it, it ended up being a mistake. I remember it clearly now. I have lilies. Alright, more likely to be up now. There we are! Ooh. I had no clue about anyone in the group and met them for the most part in the first session I joined. Really amazing people, though. Awesome. Um, it's also an in-person main party, yep. Sometimes you get those big groups. 
Did you start Spectre Knight yesterday? If so, how was it? I beat Spectre Knight yesterday, and it was good. Um, but yeah, no. Spectre Knight is my favorite of the knights, because it seemed like a lot of the things that I had issues with, like, they realized they were issues, and, uh, m like, made Spectre Knight so that it wouldn't have it as severe. Or, like, you know, there was that armor that made the pits of death. My shield was on cooldown. My shield was on cooldown. But yeah, it definitely felt like a lot of the flaws I felt like in Hollow Knight, they recognized, yeah, this is a flaw, let's fix it. Bookish with free strike is a bad idea, so this is really the only playable one. Because Hero Complex... Hero Complex could have been good. I still have two heirlooms to pick up, though. Hero Complex is great when you're doing boss fights. I'm not sure I want to just dedicate myself to boss fights just yet. Alright. Don't do the armors and items are helpful for Spectre Knight. They were. They were. Alright. We got a leather weapon. We got a Scholar Cape. Alright. Oof. It's been a treat to play in that campaign. Glad to hear it, Cracker. Glad to hear it. Oof. Always good when you have a nice group of people to be in a campaign. Alright. So, let's see here. Fire spell. Not the best spell, but we'll be alright. Enoch. That feels good. Ooh. We're just gonna not touch these for now. Ooh. Ooh. Those were some close calls. Alright, you head that way. Some painful hits. There we are. This is what I was looking for. Alright, and it looks like we're just picking this up and then disappearing off into the night because... <sighs> so the reason I am, um, like, so this one doesn't have a teleportation circle next to it, so I need to make sure that there is no, that Murmur and Gone Heads are not anywhere near here, but, like, given my routing, I do, in fact, believe that will be the case. Um... We will be needing to do Gone Heads. Gone Heads is definitely far off from my position. I am going to have to scale back for that. DM'd in your second ever session? Jeez. 
And I feel like I'm getting way better at DMing in 5th edition than... Oh, first one was a one-shot. Nice, so... Glad you feel confident with the DM. Someone needs to be the first DM, you know? Someone had to be the first person to leave the party. Alright. Lego has made another Mario set. It's a question block and it contains miniature versions of Mario six, Super Mario 64 stages. Huh. Like... It's just like, I'm assuming it's a huge question mark block with like, the bomb on battlefield sort of stuff. Maybe? I have... Like, I'm having problems visualizing it. I should go face Gonheads first because I could run into Murmur along the way, where I cannot run into Gonheads along the way if I went the other route. Use that to reset. Found gone heads. Okay, cool. Wow. Taking way too much damage. Yep. I'm dead in one hit. Just to give you a sense of how much damage I took. Needlessly. This is a fight that I could pretty often get in unscathed, so... Feels pretty bad. So we still need to find Murmur. We still need to... We still have a book to grab, which can heal us up. And... Oof. From what I saw, something just click, um, clicked, and I understood a lot right away for DMing. Ah, sometimes happens. So there's a path to the right, right at the beginning. Um, spent five weeks on a homebrew world, yep. So, I definitely... With DMing, I um, started with Lost Mine of Fandelver. Like, it's just, it's a good starting one. Gave me a sense of what you're looking for. Um, adding a campaign and stuff like that. So. Ooh. Found Murmur. Whew. But yeah, um, when I homebrew, what I do is I would always um, take an existing world, in this case Feyrun, the Forgotten Realms, and I would then just adapt it to fit what I'm doing, you know? So that way I had, basically by doing that, I always had all the maps I needed, but I didn't have to, you know, work on maps, really. There's meat down there. And yes, I am low enough on health that I'm happy to get meat. I think it makes me enough of a difference that I think that was a smart move. Most Nintendo theme sets are pretty big, like the NES being the same size as a real one, and the old TV but half the size. I think that set was just about five, fifteen hundred pieces. Yeah, that's a big set. That's a big set. All right.
We're gonna just try to kill them off. Hopefully succeed. Direct hit. I think I can take quite a few indirect hits. By indirect hits, I mean like these fireballs don't deal as much damage as Nama. The spikes don't deal as much damage as Nama, that sort of stuff. Wait, you ask about the game? Why are all the bosses shadows now? Didn't they use... Yeah, so I have a... I have a trait that turns everything into black silhouettes. That's why I have the, um, the change in my gold. So this is... Some characters have random traits. This one has a trait that makes it so that they're just all black shadows. So that's actually the thing that this guy has. Alright, well I took zero damage in that fight, so let's just do that again with Enoch. So then I could use the book to heal up as I go through the Sun Tower. That sounds like a good idea. Not sure if it's going to work, but we're going to try it. not be able to tell why that thing is up, so we're going to be safe. So yeah, this part of, Enoch, of the Enoch fight is much harder when they're high up because of the void orbs being harder to approach. Thank goodness I know my hitboxes. things going. Just take no hits. Just took that great wise advice that the internet once told me of just don't get hit roll. Which 
should have listened. Oh, that was dangerous. No, that was calculated. I knew I wasn't going to get hit there. Not a chance. And then my hitboxes. So. They should have made it so it reads Estuary Defeated to make people think they won. Listen, even when they used to call it False Estuary Enoch, people would still think they won. People would still think they won, so... Yes, they could have added Estuary Defeated, but that is technically... But, like, here's the thing. That makes that technically false. And I think they can literally keep it pretty clear. And still be successful in fooling people, because... They've done it before. All right. So, like, it would be cool. It would be nice to, like, commit to it, as you said, to actually add SUA Defeated to it. But then it just, like, they don't need to. And then it, like, breaks a, it's like a breach of trust sort of thing. Which I guess that entire fight is a breach of trust to an extent. Hey vibes, how's it going? We just chilling, doing a run. Oof. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, these ones are a little harder to see. This thing's gonna come back up. Alright. Oof. Glad to hear you're doing great vibes. Glad to hear. I remember when I first played Hollow Knight, I was fighting Soulmaster. Yep, defeated the first base, put down my controller, thinking he died, and immediately lost because of his face too. You're I've seen someone else do the exact same thing. The only reason I did it is because I was just still so tense and on edge because of how that fight feels for me. But yeah. Soulmaster is very much I like the Soulmaster fight. Um like the first time you go through it, it definitely sucks, but like it has an important, like there's an important learning experience in it. I don't know how else to explain it. It's the first fight that declares, hey, have you, have you learned to add dashing to your combat? Because here's a character that if you don't, you're not really going to hit him very often. So we gave you dash quite a while ago. Have you learned to master it yet? All right, keeps going up. Still higher. Ooh. Oh my god, we made it without getting hit. Wow. I don't know if that was an easy... That was an easy castle. Okay, we're going to state that that was an easy castle. We had, like, four rooms.
we are. Ooh. I like how, um, with the boss in Hollow Knight, that he goes into a second phase, he floats up from the background, and then uses Desolate Dive ability to hurt you. Yep. So, yeah, I, I do like some of the, like, I think, Hall, obviously, Hollow Knight's a well-designed game. We wouldn't be talking about it if we didn't love the design of that game. That was a sub-40. Hey, been a while since I've had a sub-40. Well done, Lady Aaron. All it took was you to get all the way through the entirety of Sun Tower without taking a single hit. I need to do that more often. <laughs> but yeah, um, with yeah, with that boss, there's just a lot of cool design themes. So one thing that I wish I could make, I was like ready to make a video for, was that the Soul Master is the first boss that actually says, "Hey, have you learned how to use dash properly? Can you use it in combat effectively?" And, but unlike something like a Legend of Zelda, this isn't like in the same area where you got dashed. You got dashed from Hornet. You could still, like, you could face Mantis Swords first. You could miss Soul Master entirely and not even get that desolate dive and beat the game. Like, this is an optional boss. There is another optional boss before it. Um, if you go different directions, there's other optional bosses along the way. There's stuff like that. And yet, they just say, hey, this is here. We want to see, are you good at dashing? Because Soul Master teleports. So if you're not dashing, you're not going to hit him very often. And they test it in a way that's... And that's another way. They're testing it not in... Um, if you can't dash, you're going to get wrecked. It's if you can't dash properly, you're just not going to find as many opportunities to attack. You're going to have a much longer slog. Which I think is a really cool way of doing it. And, like, if you think about the boss for having dash and man... Like, the boss for Mantis Claw and dash are technically when you get um, the little pathway to get to um, the City of Tears. That's technically the boss. And, like, a lot of people take, like, that's the Legend of Zelda style boss. It's the first challenge that says, hey, you need to know how this theme works. But once you do, congratulations, you basically won. Like, that's how I would describe it. I would consider that the Legend of Zelda style boss. And then they have an actual, hey, have you mastered the system boss? Which I think is super cool that the they switch from, um, use the item to solve the situation, to have you mastered the item yet. Here, we give you a bunch of additional time to master it. like that a lot. The Traitor Lord also teaches you how to fight with Shadow Dash, since the timing of your attacks matches perfectly with the charge of your dash. Yep. And also, there are attacks that are undodgeable without sh Shade Cloak. You are correct in multiple ways. Yep. But... Yeah, nah. Just stuff like that is really good design, because notice that those bosses, like that Shade Cloak boss, isn't down in the Abyss. Down in the Abyss, there, there's not really a boss for Shade Cloak. You just kind of, you can get that. I think that's just really, I think it's really cool design that they just give you all that space to learn how to use that item as a weapon before you ha are forced to master it, so that you actually can master it. I think that's just really cool. I think that's really cool. All right. Next run. It's hot in here without a fan, but that's what must be done to keep the audio quality high. Three, two, one, go. Just making sure. All right, because I'm waiting for a call, but just making sure it didn't happen. Yeah, it's not. Alright. And... Oh, I hit the ground. Ineffective. Minus two frames. Scratch the entire thing. Reset. Combative, you say. Let's go with it. Let's try to be combative. So combative, in case you're wondering, is a very high risk, very high reward. It's basically serrated handles bargain at all. Um, half damage plus 150% strength weapon damage and minus the attack damage. So yeah, this is serrated handles bargain as a trait. Now it is what it's not as strong as serrated handles bargain, but it's a trait. You can get it basically for free, and it actually does not change how apples work. So if we find an apple, we'll actually be um, 
increasing our health quite significantly. You know, if we don't die horribly, because we're at half health at all at the begin as we begin the run. And I make mistakes because I am human. Silver chest. Let's see. Let's get ourselves some equipment. Leather cape. That's good. I'm seriously getting that. Considering you can get that silver chest down there. All right. Oof. The current previous patch still has, so Apple only gets 15, only gives 15 HP to a combative. Ah, was I incorrect then? I don't know if you're confirming what I said, or doesn't matter. I missed time my shield bash. I would say for Enraged Guardian 2, you need to, um, alright, just a sec, we got a cartographer. It's a diva cartographer, so we're getting a lot of money, but we're having a lot of penalties for it. So we can see our the path ahead, and that's it. <laughs> Um, no, no, I think for beta patch they have it messed up where um, you gain you gain 30 health with combative when you're not supposed to. Alright, so we need to go up. So we're going up first. So this spell sucks, so we want to be a strength-based build if we can help it. Alright, so now it's just right, right and up and left. Okay. Uh, I don't have air dashes. Alright, and now we just go all the way up. And left. Whew. It's a good thing. You definitely don't gain 30 health in the public patch. Alright, good to know. Also, they have this little glitch where I can see the map over in the corner of my screen. Even though I can't see my sticker on it, I'm not supposed to see the map whatsoever. Alright, this thing has a timing cooldown, which is stupid. So now I actually have to go that way. Oh my gosh, there was... Forgot there's two lanterns. Alright. Let's see how well I remember this, because apparently I don't remember it perfectly. Alright, this is the one where we jump. Could you imagine doing this for your first time with D.Va? Could you imagine? Oof. Alright, well. Sometimes mistakes are good, such as my Spectre Knight one, where I died 13 times in Tinker Knight stage, but still caught the achievement. Nice. Oh, right, right, I'm in a different map. Alright. So, it's up. I just want to check. So, it's way over to the left. It's up. Okay. I think I got a basic sense of how that map's going to pan out, though I don't like it. Alright, so now we're going... Alright, so I have to go left and down, and just way down and right. Oof. And that will actually take me away from the exit. Darn. Hmm. I'll take this one. So this one's changed, so it... Like, you have a projectile destroyer, basically. Alright. So, from here... We go right and down, it looks like. 
Ooh. All right. So now we kill a mech. All right. Let's do this properly somehow. Don't ask me how. Oh my gosh. No real reason to use that very often, because the shockwave only does 33 damage to my 30. So this is a slow mech, and there's nothing I can really do about it. You know what? Failed that attack. Which is scary because I actually am going to have to go around. I don't heal immediately after the mech. Because I actually have to go find the exit. Was not right next to. It was not to be I found yet. I know where to go, but I also know it's quite a pathway. Whew. All right. Whew. I wouldn't say mistakes are good, but that mistakes aren't as devastating as you might think at first. Anyways, thanks to these buffs, that is more than enough gold. And I appreciate that much. Alright. So from here, up, up, left. Up, up, left, and then up into the right whenever possible. Okay, made it. Despite your directions. I just realized I'm basically walk going through like, this is like driving a car through a dark alleyway with a, a map to guide you. Like, the directions better be spot on cause I only see the path left and the path right and that's it. <laughs> and I don't know this road. All right. Gosh. Whew. The sad thing is, if this run even ends up good, I can't really show it off that well. <laughs> because if you don't know this game, like, I just look like I'm just... Sh Swinging to the darkness. But I do love all the confetti that's came around. All right, there we are. Quick question: Have you ever? Played or tried the Paper Mario games? Yes, I've played through the entirety of Thousand Year Door, which got me to um, play the original, which got me to play Super Paper Mario, which Super Paper Mario was not bad. It just wasn't Paper Mario. And then um, after that, I had um, Sticker Star, and uh, I'm just gonna stop talking about that one. Oof. 
but yeah, dude. Great series of games. Alright, so that's one of the big problems, that the projectile that shoots out only appears after you're done with your dash. So you can't dash into a projectile thinking you're safe. You have to end your dash, and then it comes out. Ooh. All right, well, we got to this chest. I have a feeling we might not be making it through here, but honestly, I'm okay with that. I'm impressed we got as far as we did. Also, I'm impressed that this was not revealed. All right, Coleus Shell. I just realized, unless I go hunting enemies, that's not gonna get completed anytime soon. So, we're gonna kill that sentry, and we're gonna actually start considering enemy hunting. There we are. Whew. My best friend made a surprise visit with my late birthday gift. Dude, a PS... Dude, that's awesome. Dude, that's awesome. Good for you, Kraken Sile. Good for you. Glad you... Hope... I hope you enjoy it, man. Whoop. is this? Ah. Two more. Alright. So once I kill this shoulder... Alright, Coley's still is charged. That's good. So I can now do something stupid and be fine. Well, did something stupid. It's all right. Oh man. In case you're wondering, this is very hard to do. Oh no. Not the place for it. No! Okay, didn't die, didn't die. Not dead yet. All right, could I get some healing please? That's not healing. I'm taking it because it increases my damage output, because I definitely it's definitely better than White Star. But that's not healing. Alright, two more, so if I kill these two. All right, there we go. We got a Coleus Shell charge. We good. Oof. As long as these two stick generally together, I'll be fine. It's when they don't when they split up that I'm going to have real issues. But I do have a Coleus Gel charge, so I can make a mistake without dying instantly. Well, there's my mistake.
No, get back together. Get back together. Good, good. Whew. Just gotta be careful right now because. Oh my god. I need healing. Here's the only spell that could hurt you. Have fun. <laughs> Alright. Well, that's a lot of money, guys. Oof. He just got a PS5. I also have access to all the games he downloaded. Dude, so now I have a lot more options to even stream. It opens up so many avenues for gaming in general. Delivery, he deliberately lied about what he was gaming, so it's good performance. Yeah, dude, glad to hear it, glad to hear it. Yeah, Dragon's Vow comes out sometime in mid to late September, that is correct. And I'm gonna say that is far enough away that we're gonna chicken out and grab ourselves a book. Oof. But yeah. I've only played Sticker Star and recently replayed Super Paper Mario, which I like, although going for everything like cards was annoying. Yeah, no, 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 you don't... Yeah, Sticker Star, in case you're wondering, is recognized as the worst of the series. Like, not even close. Um, so yes, if you start with Sticker Star, my apologies. My apologies. Um, well, you should start... And yeah, paper, Super Paper Mario is good. Thousand Year Door is considered, like, its best. Super Paper Mario has a great story, but very different mechanics. As you said, the collecting cards is kind of rough. And that started with um, Super Paper Mario. Though not to the degree of Sticker Star. And Color Splash, I hear it was not as bad of a game as Sticker Star. But it was very much the same vein as Sticker Star, which puts it down several categories. You know? Oh my gosh. Can't believe I did that hit. Alright, light up the stage, everyone. Alright. Well, lost my Colius Shell Charge, but I have zero damage on me, so that's something. Alright. There we go. Gosh, the map over in that corner is so awkward. I've had Super Paper Mario for nine years, and I left it for like six, because younger me couldn't figure out how to put some of the, one of the puzzles. Um, of jump under the red tree ten times in the third level. Yep. There, there were some weird puzzles. There was that one area where you have to, like, collect a bunch of, um, rubies. Uh, there's some weird stuff. Not gonna deny that. Alright. So, let's see. I'm gonna go right, up. Alright. Alright. I'm gonna grab this one. And, yes, I'm gonna damage boost for people that are wondering. Alright, then we go right, and we're gonna go up when we find the next lily. And once we find the next lily, Nama is unfortunately in a very bad spot as well. Oof. Darn it, this is the one I couldn't- the one that I could not pick up without. Alright. We're in the wrong place. 
I'm okay because I managed to escape the warg, but I need to go down, right, upright. The last part of the game was Chapter 7, where they just randomly threw in a Dragon Quest reference. Dude, Super Mario Party was a game. Like, it was something. I'm oh, sorry, not Super Mario Party. Super Paper Mario was a game. It wasn't a Ma Paper Mario game. It wasn't a Mario game. It was just, it was a game. And I appreciate it for what it was. Though, I'm going to have some work trying to define what that is. Damage, just use the Colise Shell Charge. I'll accept that. I keep doing that. I keep losing my Colise Shell Charges in here. But yeah, could you imagine doing these platforming challenges for your first time with D.Va? Like, thank goodness I have... Um, I actually know what I'm doing. Yeah. It's impressive that the game can convey Lily of the Valley is important without directly saying so. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, it costs resolve that makes it important. Like, I do like how they convey it. Alright, so we're just going left, down, right, and then we're just heading down and right, basically. Do I have to go down from here? Alright. Actually, could go right here. Cool. Alright, so now it's down and to the right. Alright. Just past this room. It's just a matter of getting through that room. Because, yeah, that was a nightmare of a room. Alright. Got a scholar weapon, that's good. Oof. This game will have achievements once it releases, correct. Um, all that sort of stuff has to be post-release. Um, we're grabbing this damage boost because we're all right. We already have to come to this room. So. All right. Messed up my shield bash. Got punished for it. Oof. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go, but I hope you have a good rest of the run. Thank you very much, Destiny Bound. I appreciate it. All right. All right. So because I know where um, I have a map, so I can I know where everything is gonna be. I am actually gonna open this room. Uh, just to just to start the fight and get myself my resolve back. Should I just kill them off? I'm not sure I can, but we're gonna try because the fastest route is killing them off here. The big question is, do those dashes destroy the lanterns? Because if they do, that changes how I can approach this fight, like, drastically. Missed. No way. Because it could definitely destroy fireballs, but I have no idea if it destroys lanterns.
that was... Ah. There's so many things that went wrong there. So many things that went wrong there. And it really disappoints me that, like, they all happened at once like that. Ugh. I'm real tired, so you need to go to sleep. Alright, good night, man. Good night. This is a tough decision. I could grab Vit. Nah. I'll grab Blaze Bell since it's a better damage output. But yeah, that was just like. The shield. Like, I. I had to shield dash the ground. I lost. I barely didn't make it past the lanterns with invincibility frames. And then, um. Because I barely made, didn't make it past the lanterns, I fell back into the spikes and couldn't get out before Nama took me out. So that was just a list of issues there, and that feels bad. Have a good PlayStation. Thank you very much, Joel. Thank you very much for coming by as well. Alright, we already have book unlocked. And yeah, in case you're wearing that one armor upgrade gives me enough to give me... That's why I have 25 resolve instead of... 125 resolve instead of just 100 resolve. Alright. Oof. Facing the mall was ambitious. Can't deny that. Alright. Let's use this character to go explore Stiggy and Study. That we know generally where things are. Generally. I know it's not the best layout. We just live with that. Yeah. Hurts, but worth. Afford anything beyond this. I'm gonna say, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I'm supposed to go on left from here, aren't I? Alright. Gotta find Murmur. I think it's just there. Yep. Alright, so here's Murmur. From here we go left and up. Oh. Or not. Mispositioned myself. If I remember, we had to find Murmur first, then we can go up. But apparently, maybe I miscalculated? Yeah, I must have really miscalculated. Alright, yeah, we're not fighting um, Gone Heads at 89 health. Not this time. Alright. Here's the book, or the bell, and up there is Enoch. So, here we go. And this is the last heirloom, so all damage is permanent from here on. Gotta remember that. And we do not have any negotiation, no in understanding of where, um, how to do the tower, because I did not bother to pause and check that out. Alright. That's good to know. Oop. There we 
go. Awesome. Let's keep it moving. Alright. We have 70% resolve, so we are a bit low on health, but should be fine. So we're going to go find Enoch's room, which should be directly above us, if I remember the map correctly. It's literally just this next room. Alright, I was incorrect, but I was not far off. And now we're facing the Maw because we have Achilles' shield plus um, Amaterasu's sun for raw damage output. And yeah, I'd like to leverage the Achilles' shield while I'm at above 50% health. I'm here, but finishing up yesterday's VOD. All right, glad to hear it, glad to hear it. All right, Whoop. so we have that taken care of. Let's go get Murmur. After Murmur, we grab Gone Heads. Yeah, this is definitely um, with the reduced health due to the 70 resolve, plus the um, Amaterasu Sun, Achilles Shield Serve combo. This is definitely a character that is gonna be built around fine bosses over exploring the Sun Tower. Ooh, missed you finishing Spectre Knight. Ah, I see, yep. Ooh, my favorite of the th three games I've played so far from that. Ooh. Myself back to full health, which seems like a very not speedrunner thing to do until you realize I have Achilles shield and that that health actually will matter. I'm keeping my damage up. Alright. Alright, so from here we need to kill Gone Heads. And with Gone Heads dead, we then go to Enoch. With Enoch dead, we have the tower in front of us. And we now know it is very much within our possibility to just take out the tower. Just no hit t tower takedown. Oh my god. Well, there goes all my health. Slight love tap. Ugh. I can't. Hold on. Well, I still killed them pretty quickly. That feels good. 
I think I have just enough health to survive one hit from Enoch, even though Achilles' shield is now inactive. Oh my god, because, she because of that, because I have no heirlooms to find, it is actually, like, a good thing, a strategic thing, to grab a random heirloom to reduce my maximum health to re-trigger Achilles' shield. Even if it's, like, Ivy Seed or something that's completely useless for me. I knew that that thing was going to trigger, I just didn't know when. Alright. Barbarian with Boxing Bell. Okay, okay. So this character should be able to wreck Enoch with the Boxing Bell Spin to Win strat. And then once I'm done with that, um, it's a Barbarian. It should be able to climb the tower pretty effectively. Despite having 80% resolve, it has as much health as if I didn't have, as if I was a knight with 100% resolve. Alright. Move forward. As always, tally-ho. Alright. Hmm. Spectre Balls. Well, I used my Shout, so at least I got full value out of it. Is it lore related that the skeletons are the only void beasts to have a death animation? Um, kinda? So it's lore related that the skeletons are a very, like. They are not like the other void beasts. I will say that much. Um. Whether or not the death animation is lore related, it is they are beyond the other void beasts in, like, a significant means. There is a theme that distinguishes the skeletons from the Void Beast protecting Enoch. Alright. Well. Unlikely this guy gets far in the tower. So I'll probably end up using this guy just to get the damage boost. Like, I cannot think why, specifically, um, there's a reason that the Void Beast Bareth and Halfar, um, do have the whole phasing out thing, unlike the Gone Heads and stuff, but there's definitely a reason why there's a painting for, um, Void Beast Halfar and Void Beast Bareth, or Bareth and Halfar, as a singular painting, and as part of that singular painting, why they actually have a painting. And yep. All right. Knew I wouldn't get very far. Nonetheless, that was a little short. All 
Alright. I'm gonna go with that. Alright, that's probably all the gold I have for the rest of this run, unfortunately. Whew. Oh well. We'll see how we fare with this. We have an emotional, masochistic fireball. Which means that's a very rare fireball. That So because of the way they changed um, emotional dysregularity, it does not increase intelligence anymore, it just increases the raw damage of the spell. So when the spell is um, fire damage dependent, it actually really doesn't get helped at all from emotional dysregularity. Like it... The initial hit is what is helped. Alright. There we are. Use that to get rid of the fireballs. Oh my gosh. you. I'm just choosing the knight every time because the knight is the most capable, like, it just has the most health of those options down there, so the knight is the most capable of actually getting through here and to the exit. Ugh. But yeah. Muscle weakness doesn't mean much because I'm not going to be fighting much things, and when I do fight it's going to be the boss who doesn't get knocked back anyways. Definitely like losing all my health at the beginning. Ugh. Ah, took some damage from that. Oh well. start here. That's why you start there, because you might not need to go through all that danger. Uh, darn cursor. Right, most health. Oh god, he has Icarus Wings. He has Icarus Wings and is a perfect... Well, actually, that's not bad. It's just Icarus Wings feels weird. When you practice, obviously, Icarus Wings is one of those things where, like aerodynamic, where it feels weird, so even if it's strong, um, yeah, even if, um, the Icarus Wings or the aerodynamics is strong, the fact that changes how you're used to playing the game makes it worse than it could be normally. Finish the VOD, Spectre Knight is so good, yep, dude. I think I have one jump left. Yep. It's 
Set to reset. Actually, check this path out. Nope, not an option. Ah! All right, got there. These chests do nothing at this point. And with Icarus wings, this might actually be capable of being this boss because. The whole reason I don't like them is because you spin and then you lose your ability to spin to make the boss work. But I might be able to just stay in constant spin. Is Icarus Green Secret OP on Irod? Because you don't really need that jump height, just the extra vertical movement sometimes. Seem pretty strong, but I'd rather play a knight anyways. Like, there are a lot of these ROP on Irod. Dwarfism and Disattuned are both not exactly secret OP, but OP. Um So There's a lot of things that are just like exceptional against Irad that aren't exceptional against other bosses normally. So Yeah. <sighs> well, this run basically started with a character with D.Va and Cartographer, so it's just like <laughs> the blind map maker. That was what this run was. was the blind map maker. That was foolishness on my part, in case anyone's wondering. There was some bad timing, but um, I could have easily done some stuff to avoid that bad timing, such as, you know, use one of my shield blocks that I have that I chose the knight because I like.
Oh my gosh, made a mistake. But it's okay. It froze him over. <sighs> blind leads the blind. And we actually found something. It's impressive, honestly. We didn't find any money. Don't you worry about that. Mine's 100% gold. This wasn't really it, but we found the end. It's kind of like finding a cliff, except not falling off it. Sub 50, hey. Did this really go that south? I definitely know a lot of the rooms were really bad. Like, I'm surprised it went this south. Huh. To be just barely sub 50. Interesting. Hmm. Oh well. Thank you, Sir Teddy. Thank you for finishing this off for me. Alright. I'm gonna use a little time to finish my... to do this legacy. Alright. Duelist or Disatune Cook. Let's go with Disatune Cook, because the Cook has a lot of ways of healing, and the Disatune's just gonna make it so I don't get hit very often at all. Oh, wait, wait. Should've realized that I need to buff that up sooner. Oh, well. Because, yeah, I want to keep increasing my resolve, which the best way to do that is increase my, um... The best way to increase my resolve is to increase my equip weight. Right now, at least. She has never paid by except pizza. That's good. That is good. Alright. Oh. This is no longer speedrun is chill. This is NG plus and chill. Plus and chill. Discount speedrun. Alright. We are now capable of playing. We haven't been any of them. But we have access to even the Sun Tower. That's fantastic. Alright. Yep, I remember that. Pacifist did some good work in my last life. I also need XP, so it's good to actually be killing things. Because... I'm low on intelligence. And 212 experience. Regular enemies. Ooh. Should have done gold ups and XP ups, honestly. Oh well. Ooh. No damage yet. Good day, I'd like to play my guitar in the free time. Nice instruments. Ugh. Darn. Trust the sun is pointless. Don't really want the cloth of spindle. I have enough resolve to pick up Hyperion's ring. Feels good. Despite playing for almost 10 years now, I'm still not very good. Eh. You're better than I am, I'll tell you that much. I'm not sure if that means anything to you, but be proud of that much. Alright. Let's just kill Lamech. Let's see if Lamech Prime can be defeated. I have the best spell for this fight. But we don't have much damage up, which is the main issue.
Look at this. New game plus two, and we're doing 40 points of damage on a hit. Like... In case you're wondering... Um... Like, 40 points of damage is something that's actually reachable in a speedrun. And we're doing that that much damage... In a new game plus two, so... Pretty sad. Ooh, Ooh the decision saved me so much there. And one half of the damage in just a dot tick, yep. at the halfway mark and we're out of health recovery so there's two of them so hopefully that kills both Ooh, that did not kill both just because of necessity. So yeah, I was jumping up to try to intercept them as they were still coming out, because that was my best way of destroying all the projectiles coming at me, just to intercept them right off the entrance. With that wrong. I'm in serious trouble. I'm not sure if I'm low enough I get one shot by it might be. I have Hyperion's Ring, dub. I have survivability. I have survivability. Oh my gosh. Long fight. Long fight. There we go. Good amount of money. Yep, very long mech fight. Very long. And keep in mind, that was at level 138.
Uh, I, I'm actually interested. I want to see if from this I can get a sense of whether Lamex was born was a skeleton when they became a estuary, like was always a skeleton, or if they were human. Torn banner of a foreign kingdom flutters in the wind, buried amongst the corpses and the crows. In the distance, Lamex stands tall on a mountain of bodies, a monument to his success. Soldiers, terror, and women raise their blades to the sky as they shout his name across the valleys. So that is one he was before he became an estuary, I think. I knew, I always knew. I ignored the reports and made false truths in my head. I tricked myself into believing the rebellion was to be smaller than it truly was. I could have quashed the rebels in their homes, destroyed whatever hope, vestige of hope they had. But I didn't. This war was never needed to happen. I kept this knowledge myself, knowing the cost. I didn't want to be here anymore, in this eternal prison guarding the tree that will never sprout. I want to die gloriously, one last final hurrah to end my chapter. But there was no death, there was no glory. No one left to fight now, no battle to lose. The original mech throne burst open as waves of rebels surged into the room. For everyone that falls to his blade, another two replace them. The final last for hours and the days. The room is silent. Okay, that was backwards. That was backwards. It's supposed to go this one, then this one, and then Lamex memory. They messed that up. Gotta make sure they know that. So in the beta patch, the organization is slightly off. Oh no! Slightly off organization? The travesty. But like, good to let them know. Good to let them know. Second Hyperion's reign at the cost of my health pool? At the cost of my health pool? Yes. Have the health doubled Hyperion reigns. Which I just realized Hyperion reign is based off of my max health, so that might have been a mistake. Oh well. It was a fun mistake, nonetheless. Worth, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I do understand the argument that they sh Right, everything deals a lot of damage because we're in New Game Plus 2. Anyways, what I was going to say is I do understand the argument that the projectiles should just apply the burn and not um, the damage. Because when you deflect large piles of projectiles, you just mortar things. Well... Glad I have another one. Ooh. Ooh, like those guys. But first, let's kill all the guys that are shooting me through walls. That way I don't have to worry about them. But I like killing elites, especially when they're easy to kill. Like, you know, one stuck on a platform. I'd also like it if I could get anything to recharge my resources again. That'd be nice. Yeah, in case you're wondering, one of the things that they did with the update is they accidentally, like, tripled the health of elites or something like that. Something absurd. So it took us a while. Whoop. Oof. Whoop. Let's not die to random hazards.
Gain a lot of gold. Gain a lot of resources. Woo. Really dropped through the spikes. Gave me one health, so worth. After all, hits only deal a few hundred damage, so one health eventually will add up to allow me to get one, take one hit per like a hundred I kill, 112 I kill or so. So you know, if I beat, destroy this entire lobby, I'll recover from one hit from an enemy in this lobby. Obviously, being the easiest area doesn't scale, but you get the gist. Thank you, Disattuned. Made my falling asleep at the wheel not as devastating. Alright. Yeah, it's this meat that I was hoping for. And the fact that even sparkling water works. Or, sorry. Uh, whatever the magic potions are called. Like it makes the, you know, a little worse feeling. Oh well. No, we're done with relics. We explored all the ways down here, so now we just go up. Alright. Well, that hurt. And it took, it would take all three charges to partially heal up from a single mistake like that. That's kind of sad. Just shows how little I've... how little I did in the scaling department. Compared to... the damage department that they scale through. Alright. I mean, I get it's not actually sparkling water, but like, come on. Come on. <laughs> Silver chest. Alright. Scholar with the bless too, that's nice. Thanks to my magnesis runes, I still get that. Ooh. Don't wait for that one. There we go. Tons of money. 16416. This has been a pathing. There we are. That's what I've been looking for. Jeez. Big rooms. Big rooms, big rewards. You know what? 
I'm gonna go try to get to the boss, which I just realized if I make it to the boss, it's gonna take forever for me to fight that theme. Hey, wow, appreciated. Ooh. Wonder if CD Cellular Games will fix the juggling theme with Spear Maidens. Maybe. I do know they stated that they want to have two attacks per. Oh, I was gonna say they want to have two attacks per enemies, and Spear Maidens basically only have one. But then I realized their elites have two, and it doesn't really help them with the juggling situation. So yeah, I'm going here to try to get myself killed, but. There's a kind of issue that I'm pretty resilient to dying, given my situation. gonna worry about the other guys later. Here we are. Get a ton of gold. And we do need to die at some point so I can actually stop this run and go start up my next thing. It's just at the end here. It's gonna be 100% worth I promise. Even though I actually have no idea what is gonna be in the chest. Also, I'm gonna get a lot of experience for this chef. It should level up maybe twice, I think. Ooh. Oh, Key Knight? Yeah, that's the next thing you know, on the game list. Yes. Key Knight is my next game on my list. Ooh. That's always so scary when the fen trees, like the light, the. That thing has such a heavy knockback that actually um, knocks them back in front of you. Hey, honestly, we might be able to get that Midas set. Oof. rely on the kick, and despite all my reduced damage, I am technically more of a intelligence build than a combat build, so like, those things are going to take absolutely forever. If Kina is half as good as Spectre Knight, it will be amazing, yeah, and there's higher hopes because it was made after Spectre Knight. Chance level two. Ooh, crescent chest is getting ready. Ooh. 
There we go. Trick room. Always nice. Though I'm not going to equip it. That was a nice little Wombo combo theme. Killing, just like throwing the projectiles back and killing each one with its own projectile. to slay in just a moment though oh god plonky with all its additional health and look at that I was at full health and now and then I was at five from a single hit that is the power of being in this area that's why I'm here get myself killed of course that involves actually gain hit Unfortunately, I got good. Oof. Woo! Thought I was dying to the pit there. Yeah, now. Nah. Maybe dive down to get that chest, but that's the only reason I'd be down there. Oof. Let's try it. Alright, I get some iframes while this goes on, so. There we go. Took the iframes and ran with it. Well, I have one more Coleus shell, so Let's see if I can leverage it. Give myself like one more chest before we dissip dissipate into nothing here, and we'll make it a silver chest. Hey, that could actually be worth. All right, Warden we'll Kick Three. All right, this is a great day to die. A better day to live! Ha ha! Victory is mine, achieved. Oh my gosh, we're not quite dead. Oh my, we are about, hey, how's it going? So we just had some two, two decent runs. I'm just playing New Game Plus um, 2 for the fun of it. And it looks like we're doing, it looks like we actually, I came here to die. And instead it looks like I'm about to um, go meet the boss, Irad. Well, assuming I don't suddenly butcher it at the end here as I was. Ooh. Well, the other enemies couldn't kill me. I'm certain Irad can. There's no way I'm walk I'm going to have the long walk through Irad. Leviathan Helm. Yeah. 
So it took a long time for us to kill. I, I know you probably have the experience with it of how long it takes you to kill. I can't get that because of the no dash rooms. Go. We just need to knock them all to the ground floor. And I can work on it from there. Well, it was a nice try. It was a nice try, and I got a lot of chests in the process. Went from rank 4 all the way to rank 6. Hey! Worth. Worth. Alright. Well, we did our part here. I'm going to go get some water and take care of myself there, and then we'll be back with the next game of Key Knight. Everyone, if this is where you stop, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. If not, I'll see you shortly. I gotta take care of water. Oh, and Banabot, so I'll be right back.
Oof. Either way, just as long as the stream loads on either Twitch or f Twitch or YouTube, we're good. So we're just gonna have to rely on that. There's still five viewers, so I'm assuming at least someone is still actively watching. Oof. If I could get one comment, that'd be really appreciated to make sure network error isn't wide. Let me just refresh Twitch to see if it the network error has fixed itself. Yep, network error fixed itself. That's good to know. All right. Whew. Take a deep breath. So this is a prequel, it said. Regal prequel. Okay. So this is happening, and then Spectre Knight is recruiting him. Alright. Da -da -da. Let's go. King of Cards. If this is a strategy game, I'm going to be super excited. Long ago, the lads were untamed and roamed by legendary adventures. Oof. By all appearances, peace had flourished, and carefree new pastimes have taken hold. A card game called Jousts has swept the land, and with it, word of a grand tournament. Presiding over the contest are three Jousts just judges. These wise kings have been chosen to spread joy and unity. Oof. This contest is of great interest to King Knight, for those um call him a fool who plays at King. Even fools know this. However defeats all three Joustus judges will win an incredible treasure and be crowned King of Cards. I have a feeling that's not actually what the case is, but we'll go with it. Competing for the Joustless Crown is no simple matter, but Key Knight schemes undeterred toward a kingdom of his own. Alright. I'm gonna check real fast. Ah, by the way, fancy. But, just wanna check, so I have three people watching me who said that the sound is not working, but, um, video is. One person who says that the video is not working. I just say this, guys, I think the best solution is for me to cut the stream short and just make sure that when I stream next time, you can actually see what's going on, you know? So I think I'm just going to say tomorrow is when we start Key Night. I apologize. I know some people were looking forward to this, but if you, there are people who can't hear me, can't see me, if connections are going south, I can't, you know, I have to make sure that we get a good stream, you know? So... I think I'm actually gonna unfortunately take get rid of this. I'm gonna just delete this profile. And we're gonna continue that next time, unfortunately. So if you guys can still hear me, I'm just gonna raid a channel and we'll figure it out next time because that doesn't really work. Alright, Jim the Eternal is actually playing Rogue Legacy 2 himself, so hopefully you guys can hear him. So, we basically had a Rogue Legacy 2 stream, so looks like he'll finish it off. Thank you so much for watching, if you can hear me at all. 